Next, we have Avik, uh, who's um, I Avik. Your your screen is your screen is a bit. I you know ah this now now it's now it's better. <laughs> I was confused as to what was happening there. Um, all right, I, I will quickly introduce Avik Pal uh, from the Julia Lab at MIT, who's going to talk about mixing implicit and explicit deep learning with skip DEQs and infinite time neurologies. Yeah. So, hey, everyone, I'm Avik, and I'm going to be talking about uh, mixing implicit and explicit deep learning with skip decks. So, this is a work done at Julia Lab in collaboration with Alan Littleman and Chris. Uh, so, we'll directly get into uh, what deep equilibrium networks are. So they're essentially a class of implicit neural networks, which are used to model infinitely deep neural networks. So what that means, essentially, we have an explicit neural network, let's say f of theta. And we just want to apply the same function over the input x an infinite number of times. So it's essentially an infinite composition. Uh, but that raises two questions. How would we actually backpropagate through an infinite composition? And how do we reasonably store those intermediate solutions because there are potentially an infinite number of them? Uh, so what happens when you actually iteratively evaluate the same function over, over, over and over again? So there can, there can be many possibilities, but let's say three of the most common ones. The first one would be if the solution just diverges. One case could be the solution keeps on oscillating between multiple values. And the third one could be that it reaches a steady state or an equilibrium. Uh, this, uh, this third case is what we are mostly concerned about because that would mean that if we evaluate a function uh, for n times uh, and we reach a constant value, we do not really need to evaluate the function till infinity. We have already reached a steady state solution and it doesn't really matter how many times we evaluate it next. So this is where the deep equilibrium model comes in. So instead of just uh, defining a new, new explicit model, we are just saying that the output of this uh, equilibrium model must be the steady solution of the steady state equation, f of theta with an initial condition zero and parameters theta. Uh, now, do, because of implicit function theorem, what we can do is if we differentiate the function it turns out that we, in the backward pass, we just have to solve a linear equation. So we do not really need to solve, like store any of the intermediate values. This is good because uh, if you see the equation, it just means that we need one VJP, which, uh, we, which we get from the reverse mode out of def. So packages like zygote or reverse def would give us that. And we can solve the linear equation using any neutron Krylov method, which is really fast. And again, like we do not really need to store any of the intermediate com computations. Uh, now that we know what deep equilibrium models are, uh, like why are we actually interested in studying these models? First thing is that the backpropagation doesn't really rely on intermediate gradients. Uh, so, which means that these models are really memory efficient. Like you can have a thousand iterations or a hundred iterations, the memory cost for the backward pass is constant. Second, you can have you are able to model dynamical systems more accurately. So you can impose stronger inductive biases into those models, and in a lot of cases that would actually accelerate uh, your learning because you have stronger priors. The last and um, uh, the case that we are mostly interested in is that these models can automatically adapt their depth to the input. So for explicit models, you have a fixed model and given any input of any complexity, you have, the, you have to do the same computation. But let's say you have two cases where one is a simpler input and one is a more complex input. You want to have more depth for the more complex input and have shallower depth for the easier one. So a deep equilibrium network or even neural ODEs would automatically adapt its step based on what the input is. However, like uh, as we saw for deep equilibrium network, in the forward pass, you have to solve a steady state equation, which is not very cheap. So how do we accelerate that? And that is the question that motivates us to develop this new framework called skip decks. So 
then like we have a very simple intuition. The initial condition that we give to the solver is not very good. It's just zero, which doesn't really make sense. Can we make, have a better guess? So what we do is we have a small explicit model, let's call it GFI, and we tell the network to guess a good initial uh, condition for our steady state solver. So if the model is able to predict the initial condition that's really close to this actual uh, steady state, we'll have to perform less iterations. So the idea is that over time, like as we are training the model and we are doing it end to end, so we are jointly learning theta and phi, the model would learn to predict the steady state solution or at least get so close to it that we have to perform very uh, few iterations. So we can think of it like a predictor corrector approach. So the neural network G of phi is the predictor and then the steady state solver is just performing a, a set of corrections. Uh, but now we have introduced a couple, like a few problems. Like, do we now we have to we have more hyperparameters in the form of G of phi, which is not ideal. In our experiments, we just found that if we set G of phi to be f of same same as f of theta, uh, it just works for all the problems. And as far as how do we train it, we have the we just minimize the L to norm between the initial between the guest initial condition and the final solution from the steady state solver and that and that's the essentially auxiliary loss term and we can end to end back propagate through this uh, we also explore another idea so as you can saw that introducing gfi added some extra parameters and like since our entire pitch is around like we have low uh, low memory requirements it's uh, not ideal to have extra parameters so can we actually get rid of that it turns out if we, instead of using G of uh, phi, if we minimize, so if we perform one iteration of F of theta, and we say that the first iteration needs to be as close to the steady state sub solution. So what this does would be, this would incentivize the model to learn a simpler dynamics. And turns out in most cases, even this outperforms the skip text, and we just call it skip text version two. Uh, now I'll just uh, introduce the package that we have been working on for this. So we call it FastTech and it's uh, publicly available on GitHub. So what do you do uh, to define a deep equilibrium network? You just pass an initial model and you just say what solver you're going to use. For now, uh, let's call this discrete deck solvers. I'll discuss what they are in the latest slide. To define a skip deck, you would just have to pass an additional function, which is essentially modeling G of phi. Similarly, for the regularized DEX or skip deck v2, you just uh, don't pass GFI. So, like with a simple API, you can actually perform all these kinds of different uh, deep equilibrium networks, and uh, it already implements all the linear solving in the back end and everything. Now, coming to infinite time near load ease, or as you call it, continuous DEX. So the models that we saw in the previous slides uh, were modeling discrete dynamical system, but discrete, like discrete dynamical system come with its own set of problems. So consider a linear dynamical system uh, with u naught equals to one. We know that it will converge to a steady state of zero if, al if the norm of alpha is less than one. But if you see that if you set alpha to zero point nine, you will see that every step is like it's just slowly slowly going to con convergence so in most real world applications we uh evaluating the function would be very expensive so we do not want to make a lot of evaluations similarly if alpha is minus 0 0.9 it just this value just ping pongs over the steady state so like we consider these shortcomings of dynamical like discrete dynamical systems and what we could do is rewrite the deck as a continuous dynamical system. So instead of uh, finding a steady state for f of theta z minus z, uh, we are taking that quantity and saying that this is the rate of change of z. Uh, for people who are familiar with neural ODEs, the right hand side, like if the right, entire right hand side would be modeled by, let's say, g of theta, that would exactly resemble a neural ODE. Uh, and now we are solving this uh, 
uh, infinite time neural load E with the initial condition C naught, C naught, and we are solving it till time t equals to infinity. For a neural load E, we would uh, stop at a lesser time, let's say at t equals to one or two or something like that. Also note that this formulation just works out of the box with skip text because we would just have to change the initial condition and we have made no assumption on what the initial condition is for modeling it as a continuous dynamical system. Again, like we uh, provide out of the box support for continuous text and fast tech. So this was the example from the previous slide. Uh, so we have a discrete text solver. So instead of just passing a discrete text solver, you could just pass a continuous text solver and pass your favorite ODE solver. So here we are using TZ5. Uh, and in most of the other ODE solvers would just work out of the box. You could even use a fixed time step solver uh, and it should just work. Now uh, coming to a few results. Uh, so what we see is that our models do indeed converge much faster to the steady state. So here is a toy problem. We are just fitting uh, multiple points to a polynomial. Uh, if you look at the leftmost, you will see that the uh, solution actually wiggles a lot before it actually converges to the red line, which is the ground truth. Uh, skip deck also like doesn't wiggle that much, but also takes some time to reach the solution. Whereas skip type V2 or regularized text uh, reach the steady state really fast and they do not actually wiggle. Uh, coming to more realistic cases, we uh, if we run it on MNIST, it turns out we have like 2x faster training and 6x faster predictions. Uh, so our model is actually able to uh, circumvent a lot of problems with implicit models, which involve like uh, dramatically slower training and very slow predictions. So uh, we get closer to explicit, explicit models. We are not uh, completely there yet, but this is definitely a progress in the, same, in the correct direction. Now coming to continuous models, uh, for Cypher 10, we saw that if we use uh, just the vanilla deck uh, uh, with like even continuous and discrete, like none of them actually converge to a steady state. This doesn't affect training per se, however, uh the yeah uh, however if we go for continuous uh, skip decks we do see that the models are actually able to converge with a reasonable tab so for these models we had like a threshold of a maximum of 25 layers deep for convergence and within that only the continuous regularized models could uh, converge finally this is uh, some of the plot so as you can see uh we like most of the models have re like the similar accuracy, even though the continuous skip models are converge faster uh, to the steady state, which also means that during prediction and training, they are uh, trained faster. And uh, thank you, that's all. All right, uh, thanks, Avik. Um, I have one question from Discord. So um, what are some good applications? Oops, did I? Yeah, there you are. Um, your uh, screen is not on the stream, though. Ah, there it is. Um, so what are some good applications of DEQs in general? Uh, what types of problems would be good candidates for, for DEQs? Uh, so right now, I, I would say uh, we can use any of these implicit models for uh, in place of let's say any standard explicit model say image classification segmentation like uh, a lot of papers have shown that we uh, these models are competitive with uh, standard like resnets and everything for Im like imagenet and coco and all those data sets uh, some other applications would be if you're trying to uh, fit a system and you know that it, like and you know certain parameters of it so any dynamical system you could uh, try fitting those in as well. So basically anything is, so right now we are just constrained uh, with the uh, training time and like a lot of papers are currently working on the same direction. Uh, also, uh, if you consider ro robust models, so there have been certain papers showing that these models might be slightly more robust to adversarial examples than explicit models. All right. I 
Um, I'm just uh, looking for more questions from the Slack and, and YouTube. But in the meantime, I I had a question. Um, I mean, you were talking about dynamical systems, and then you and then you showed us this MNIST example, mm -hmm. and and in my mind, I couldn't quite compute the connection between image classification and dynamical systems. So, uh, mm -hmm. could you comment a bit on that? Sure. Yeah. So I, I would think of uh, like DEQs as like a general framework for like just doing a mapping, right? So you have a, a like n-dimensional real plane to an n-dimensional real plane. You're just performing a mapping. Uh, so yes, that the uh, we are so this mapping is being performed by a dynamical system, but the input can really be anything. And so and because we were targeting like a more machine learning. Uh, like traditional deep learning space, it made sense that we have like an image classification problem where the input is like an n-dimensional input would be the image. And we are just transforming that image into some latent uh, space and then just applying some form of like classification head over that. I see that, that. Clarify. Yeah, that, that does. Thank you. Um, let me, let me check the, uh, let me check the other platforms. Um, have you uh, have you tried have you tried it on dynamical systems then? And uh, you know, have, uh, what sort of uh, benchmarks and results do you see? Uh, we haven't tried directly these models on dynamical systems. However, like we are uh, using, like we are we have been developing models inspired by uh, this idea of like better initial guesses for stiff. Uh, systems and uh, I can say that we are getting at least like around seven to eight x performance gains there, like even if we include training times and everything. I see. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's. I I know we we have like three to four more minutes. I think we uh, we don't have any further questions in the chat. So what I will do is I will take this time to thank you and uh, transition to the next set of speakers and, um, and get that all set up for them. All right, thanks again, Avik.